Hello, my name is Tanya Notley. I work as an academic researcher and educator at Western Sydney University in Australia. Today, though, I'm presenting to you in relation to my role as the Deputy Chair of the Australian Media Literacy Alliance, which was formed in 2020. The founding members of the Australian Media Literacy Alliance, or UMLA, are made up of key public cultural institutions in Australia, as well as networked organisations that promote media literacy, including our national broadcasters, our national film and sound archive, and libraries. And today I'd like to briefly introduce the media literacy framework I developed with Professor Michael DeGiovanni in partnership with other UMLA members. To start, here is the definition for media literacy that we use at UMLA. In this definition, we say that media literacy is essential for full participation in society and it requires lifelong learning. But most importantly, this definition emphasises the ability to critically engage with media. And what is meant by that is we want people to always be reflecting on the media they use and create and to always be thinking deeply about the choices and decisions that are being made when media is being created. And with a framework, the main way that we support this critical reflection is by using a key concepts approach. We name six key concepts in our framework. And these key concepts build on decades of work by media literacy scholars and practitioners. Perhaps the first version of the key concepts that was used in a large scale education initiative was developed by the British Film Institute in the late 1980s to help students think critically about cinema. And since then, different versions have emerged. UNESCO, for example, use a version of the key concepts to guide the work they do on media and information literacy. So as you can see, the UMLA framework includes media technologies, media representations, media institutions, media languages, and media relationships. And the idea here is that these key concepts define the parameters and the focus for media literacy education efforts or initiatives, whether that's a program or a resource or a classroom activity. And while the AMLA model is a little different from some other versions, generally the key concept approach used in the UK and Australia and many other places has stayed quite stable over the decades. Media technologies has perhaps received greater attention since develops, developments like the internet or smartphones, and the relationships key concept we added to our own framework when we created it in 2020, since we believe that social media has made media engagement far more interpersonal and connective, and this warrants new critical questions. Behind each key concept are some pivotal critical thinking questions, like who made this media and why did they make it? Who was this media made for and how are they likely to respond to it? How are people, places or ideas portrayed in this media and what are the impacts of this portrayal? What technologies we use to produce, access and circulate this media? Does the technology gather personal data from users? How does this media communicate using image, sounds and written text? And what kind of relationships are being developed through the distribution and use of this media? These questions may not always be asked directly to learners. They might instead be embedded into activities or learning resources. How this happens obviously needs to be age and context appropriate. So to show you um, what this might look like in practice, you can see here a classroom activity worksheet created by one of the UMLA members, the Museum of Australian Democracy. And this was created for year five to six students. And there are a series of these, um, and they were designed with the aim to support teachers to start a critical thinking conversation with their students about different media. So this is quite a straightforward use of the framework's key concepts, whereby students are asked questions like, who created the ad? Who is the target audience for this ad? What techniques have been used to persuade you? And how does the ad make you feel? It's often really useful to build young people's media literacy skills by focusing learning activities on a media format they really enjoy and spend lots of time with. 
If you were working to develop young people's media literacy in relation to the digital games they play, you could, for example, ask them to create a short video review of a game that they play and, and you could ask them or, you know, to consider or discuss um, one or more of the key concepts in their review. Or you could get them to create a new character for the game and to consider how this character is similar or different from other characters in the game. Or another idea would be to help students think about how games shape the relationships they have with companies, technologies and other people. And they could create a network map of these relationships and discuss the pros and cons of them. You may already be familiar with the key concept approach and perhaps different versions of it. Ultimately, the key concepts are designed to ensure that media literacy efforts embed critical thinking about media so that people can think through things like media representation and inclusion, media ethics, media power and influence, and the impact of media on society. As you reflect on the value of a key concepts approach, my question to you is, which of the UMLA key concepts do you already embed in your media literacy education? And is there a key concept missing from this framework that may be important to consider in your own context? Thanks for listening.